Now, uh, on other news, this is where we're going to be Paul Forte for today. Sports <laughs> is coming into the first segment for this uh, day, for the today's show. Now, global consulting company Deloitte released its Deloitte Football Money League 2023 report on Thursday. That's right. E and excuse me, uh, 11 EPL teams are among the list of the world's highest revenue generating clubs. The report's 26th edition reveals the top 20 highest revenue generating football clubs for the 2021-2022 season. The report reported combined revenues of 9.2 billion euro in the last season, an increase of 13% compared to the value reported by Money League clubs in the season of 2020-2021. Now, the revenue growth was driven by return of fans to stadiums with match day revenues increasing from 111 million euro to 1.4 billion euro this year. Manchester City posted revenues of 731 million euro, followed by Real Madrid with 714 million. Meanwhile, Liverpool jumped up four places to third, which makes it its highest position in the publication's history. So as we've just seen, a little bit of a surprise to me, Manchester City remains the club with the largest revenue last season. We'll now have a look and see who comes behind the citizens in terms of revenue generated. In second place, we have Real Madrid. Obviously, no surprise here. Real Madrid, a very global team. There you see second place, however, still up. 11% from the previous year, they were able to generate 713.8 million euro as of last year as well. And uh, you can see as well right behind them, as mentioned, Liverpool uh, making it to the highest spot they, they, that they've ever been so far in the publication's history. And they are up 27% from the previous year, bringing in a whopping 701.7 million euros as well, which is up almost 150 million euros from the previous year as well. So definitely the Reds are on the rise. Meanwhile, Manchester United, I'm surprised they're only in fourth place. As we do know, Manchester United, one of the biggest football teams in the entire world, especially in terms of revenue generated, not just from ticket sales, but from merchandise and basically global acknowledgement as well. They are still up 23% from the previous year. Obviously, COVID plays into this as well. Keep that in mind. But they brought in an estimated six. 688.6 million euros as of last year and rounding out the top five is Paris Saint-Germain the biggest team in France right now and no surprise here as well especially when it comes to things like merchandise and ticket sales with their big three of Kylian Mbappe Neymar and of course the one and only Lionel Messi who just brought home the World Cup they are on tour right now in the Middle East he's back in Doha to take on his great longtime rival Cristiano Ronaldo but there you have it Paris Saint-Germain sitting at number five so i'd like to go over as well a little bit in regards to how this is uh, this is calculated there are a number of metrics both financial and non-financial that can be used to compare clubs it includes attendance worldwide fan base social media following and their on-pitch performance now why does on-pitch performance count because when they take part in things like the Champions League, there are cash prizes to be given depending on where they finish at the end of the tournament. Um, the total figure is used uh, to extract, is extracted from the annual financial statements of the company or group in respect to each club. And it is calculated to the end of the financial year. So the 2021-22 season will cover the entire calendar year as well. Um, there is also, uh, as I mentioned, the COVID-19 pandemic plays a huge part into this because all the football leagues, all the football teams around the world did suffer a lot of losses. However, as you can see, most of them are back on the rise. Parents say Germain almost 20% up from last year. So there you go, guys. Looking good for the football leagues around the world. Yeah. It seems yeah. like money is the back to be made again. Plus, all the people are in attendance again now uh, yeah. in full at the stadiums and that is obviously generating a lot of ticket revenue as well. My husband will love this because he loves, he's a Manchester City fan. <laughs> oh, he's a City fan. Yeah, he is. There you go. One yeah. question though, Paul. So uh, I, I think a lot of this um, 
uh, teams mm -hmm. in the t top 20 comes from one country, right? Yes, and exactly. most of them are actually in the Premier League. Yes. And this is also the case in Formula One when you have a team that is supported financially, then the chance of winning is also higher, right? So Correct. how do you see the dynamic here? Well, it's always been like that in football. Like Caroline and I, we love basketball, but we know there's a lot of parity in basketball because there's things like salary caps. Teams mm. are not allowed to spend over a certain amount. Right. And that goes across all the teams in the league. But all the teams are in one country, in the United States, and it's a lot easier to measure each other financially. And if you exceed that salary cap, then you have to pay tax. And the, the tax bracket depends on how much you overspend. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, when you talk about the five big leagues in Europe, you're talking different currencies even in the UK. They're right. still mm -hmm. cal calculated by pound sterling. Yeah. Meanwhile, all the other leagues are in Euro as well. Um, and the, basically in football, the richest team get to spend the most, they get mm. the best players. Right. And yeah. that's why you always see the big six or the big four in the right. EPL. That's why you have Real Madrid and Barcelona and Atletico Madrid and La Liga. And mm -hmm. chances are they're somewhere in the top four all the time. Mm -hmm. It's because they have more spending power. And more spending power means better players. Better players means you can sell more merchandise yeah. and more tickets as well. So Do you think you uh, the World Cup plays a role in this, especially with the numbers that you have? Uh, not in this particular case because club and country are different. You mean, Messi uh, right. is now playing in France, but then he's representing Argentina. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing that's not uh, part of it. Anything to do with international competition such as Olympics or World Cup. However, um, again, there is shifts of power depending on where players play. For example, Lionel Messi, Barcelona is somewhere there. Oh, in seventh place. Seventh place what a surprise. Yeah. Meanwhile, Barcelona is one of the richest teams mm -hmm. in the world as well. Mm -hmm. However, when Lionel Messi did make his big move to Paris Saint-Germain, that really had a huge impact on their right. For example, jerseys. Like, can you imagine how many messy jerseys they're now yeah. able to sell in Paris as yeah. opposed to in Spain? I mean, seeing Paris Saint-Germain number five, but I think maybe next year is going to climb up the ladder because we know, like, Mbappe and he got, you know, yeah. his honors on and whatnot from World Cup, you know. Amazing. By the way, both those players were in the exactly. finals as well. <laughs> exactly. Well, in uh, related news as well, sports marketing and finance expert at Lobro University, Elisabeth Manoli, um, analyze that although football clubs continue to make money, there is an issue of sustainability, sus citing that massive income is also accompanied by massive spending. Here's more on what she had to say. Every year we question whether debt in some of these clubs is sustainable, and every year these clubs survive. Um, we don't really have an answer to that question on what is sustainable or not, because the UF, uh, the governing body of the sport, for example, had introduced the financial fair play regulations in order to improve the financial health of European football. And yet we cannot tell if that has been the case. 